Hey everyone, it's Norm here from Tested at Sideshow for Sideshow Con, and I'm joined by Tim Hansen from Sideshow's Cut and Sew Department. You have one of the most interesting <laughs> jobs uh, in working with the products to create the, the clothing. You're designing clothes for poseable figures mm -hmm. as well as statues. Uh, and this line of figures that we have before us is from uh, this Clean Eastwood collection Yes, uh, that you guys have that's like a very ex unique relationship. Tell, yeah. tell me about this line. Well, you know, first of all, obviously uh, not a lot out there in terms of licensed product for Clint. Uh, so this was uh, a huge opportunity for us and really excited about this relationship. Uh, and, and even cooler, he was really excited about it too. So he was able to kind of help uh, usher a lot of these things along and we were very close with him back and forth with communication. Uh, obviously he's very personally connected to all of these characters and he really wants to make sure the representation is there. You know, not just for himself, but he loves the idea of the fans actually able to get these statues at home and these figures. And it was just a, an amazing process to have them there side by side the whole time. And not only is you know the actor so associated with the characters, Dirty Harry, Man With No Name, but also the way those characters were represented throughout the series of films. Yes, uh, in different costumes, different. Each film is going to have a. You're going to try to capture moments from the film or right. what the story was and the yeah. motions were in that film. Yes. So can you talk about some of that process? Yeah, of course. Well, you know that's that's kind of. When we have all these characters kind of laid out, starting with 2D, obviously a lot of us are huge fans of the films, uh, and having them never been done before, you know, we have this really unique chance to bring these to life, you know, to make to make people see not only what we can do, but bring bring Clint's likeness through all of these characters individually. Uh, and just, uh, westerns are huge for Clint, obviously, and for cinema just in general. Uh, so. Uh, Josie Wales, and we got, of course, Man With No Name, uh, back to our Pale Rider back there. Uh, and these are such fun explorations. Individually, you can see all of their faces having really unique qualities. That obviously, these things can't be, you know, take this face, put it on him, put it on him. They all have unique age to them. Uh, details, qualities, facial features, facial hair, hair itself, you know, all of those things are really important to hit for each film to look at them individually as their, their own pieces. Mm. And even though there's a massive fan community for the films, for the characters, there may not be a ton of information from research perspective. Right. Uh, yeah. Tell me about the, the, the part of that research in uh, getting the clothing right, and getting the accessories right. Yes, yes, always always a fun time for sure. We, we spend so much time in research with these figures and, and uh, how, uh, how they are perceived on screen. And there's very few you know, areas where you can actually see them ever just kind of displayed like in a museum type setting. Mm. Uh, so it, it's it's a lot of watching of the films. And of course, there's variations of the films. There's different color timing with these things. So we, uh, we really try to spread out and capture as much of that as possible. And we have to kind of end up narrowing and focusing it down. And the nice thing with uh, working with Clint, of course, is that he actually has an incredible memory of a lot of these things and a lot of these shoots. So as we're showing him colors for things, he's like, that's right, that's mm. not right. You know, I can see how why you guys did this, but try it this way. So we get a lot of personal feedback from him, which is great. And in your department, I'm sure you have, from your experience, a whole database of materials, of colors, yes. swatches, of you've created patterns for all different types of garments. Uh, do you start with something that's at six scale, from six scale? Do you start with something that's at life scale? When you're doing a, a, a tailored suit, mm -hmm. that's noble information for what how a suit comes together. Yes. But when you're doing something that's more bespoke or something that's more from history, you know, what is that process? Yes, well, uh, because all of these really take place at unique and individual times, finding the right pattern and the right fabrics at scale Certainly the white, the correct weathering to put on all of these garments individually, they have to all really be taken step by step. You know, watch, watch the movie, see what we can see, see if there's any background, see if there's any behind the scenes stuff, look at magazines, look at books that were done. Uh, and yes, of course, that doesn't mean making a suit at six scale will translate to quarter scale because yeah. we're ultimately capturing something a little different. And that's part of the subtleties of this job that's really fascinating for me is that it really doesn't translate directly from doing a six scale version of Harry and then you can do a quarter scale one with the same exact dimensions. 
Um, and let's talk about the quarter scale here because mm -hmm. that's it's it's not posable. It's a fixed pose, right. but it's something that you can kind of really do best in a fixed pose, which is like a mid stride. I've yes. tried posing a six scale <laughs> mid stride. It's so hard. Right. But here you have mid stride, but it sounds like then the every crease and every fold. I, I noticed this is, must be a wire in here yes, in, 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 in the jacket. Yes, um, you can fold that back a little if you'd like. Oh uh, yeah, well, yeah. So you're creating some tension here <laughs> yeah. for him in mid stride, but yes. even like where where the folds are and where the creases are right. on the pants, is that all pre-decided and predetermined? A lot of it is, truly. Uh, yes, and sometimes, you know, we, we have some, some garments even underneath those to kind of help the upper garments stay in place. Ah. So if, if there's particular wrinkles that we want to stay, you know, obviously he's walking, so you, you have to stop and think and then research what do pants do when they're walking. And yeah. sometimes this is us, uh, actually wearing some clothes or taking some photos and be like, take a step forward, let's stride, let's see what it's, let's see what's actually happening in this moment. Because right. for the quarter scale stuff, that's really what we're trying to get. We're, we're taking a snapshot, we're doing a 3D version of that, and then we're implementing it with a textile to kind of go along. And he's in multiple layers, so that adds its own kind of um, sort of ingenuity to solve and, and make work. And if, so if these pants were put on a posable quarter scale, it'd be different. Yes. A, and this is specifically tailored for this movement Correct. for this pose. Uh, at this scale, I imagine you get some benefits of the thread being more to scale with the clothing. You yeah, know, you yes, right. And, and, but, and even sourcing, like this is, was it herringbone on, on here? Nice, very like, good. Like that is, that's not easy to get at quarter scale. Where do you find herringbone at quarter scale? Yeah, that was, that was cool. You know, it's, uh, it's really looking far and wide to be honest with you. Um, and, and, you know, luckily herringbone is one of those materials that does come in a multitude of scales. But that's a lot of also uh, making sure we have communication with our production facilities and making sure that can be replicated all the way through production. Mm. You know, making a prototype is one, but our consideration is always to make sure we can get it all the way through to the to the collector. Mm. And that's really what's important with that, uh, with, with choosing fabrics and things like that. Oh, um, now, we gotta talk about Man With No Name because yes, yes. It's, <laughs> it's a character that you know, other people, have, cosplayers have, have, have posed that and people have created their own replicas of the, the poncho yes. and, and the full size costume and have come into challenges of, like you said, how it presents itself on screen versus in real life. Right. Uh, tell right. me about this journey. Yes, yes, Blondie. He was uh, very, uh, very elaborate and, and frankly a, a dream come true, honestly. Um, and knowing again that, that Clint was there and we could, we could kind of work side by side and keep updating him and he would update us. It was, it was pretty tremendous. So, you know, one, one was, uh, of course, when it comes to premium formats, we, we uh, initially start in the 2D process and we lock in the pose. And a lot of that's accompanied with uh, screen sh screenshots and you know, what's, what's the moment if we're gonna make this one character in quarter scale? You know, what are people gonna want on their shelves essentially for eternity? So it's, it's capturing that aspect of these guys, which is really important. So Blondie, of course, this is the famous end scene where you know, it's this beautiful long drawn out three-way gunfight that goes on. They're all standing, it's reflected in the base. Uh, so taking that, using the shots, breaking down the costume, of course, we have to go through the entire film to make sure that we're getting those details that we can't really read on that final scene. So uh, that, that's really it, is making that, that really true, uh, true to life statement of Clint in this moment, how awesome is he looking, and let's give it our best shot there. In color matching and in getting the details and the scale right, how many versions of a costume? <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked it. <laughs> Will you go through? Well, this one in particular was, of course, very elaborate. So, you know, what's we use the word iconic a lot, of course, with these pieces. But what is screaming out here? You know, he's got so many iconic costume details, and that poncho was right from the get go. We're like, okay, what can we do? Can we try this? Can we do this? So we ran the gamut. A multitude of different patterns and different uh, applications, different print process. We even tried embroidery at one point. Wow. You know, we were just trying to get everything out there. Let's let's at least attempt to do all these things, and then on the back end, we'll you know have a full rundown and see what's what works the best. So I have I have a couple of those samples. Yeah, I'd love to take a look. Oh. So this this was uh, this was actually our previous prototype version that uh, Clint himself saw when he was here. So we went through some other graphic and color iterations. I see it's wired as yes, well, yeah, uh, wired. different. So you can see front and yes, back, of course, back. very important. Wow. So then even the graphic on this ended up changing, going through another iteration, because there were certain 
when we were deciding on, you know, how best to represent all the mm. embroidery in there, if we couldn't do actual threads, mm -hmm. then, mm -hmm. you know, what, what's the best way to, to kind of represent that? So we worked with our graphics department. Margo and graphics was phenomenal. And we just went through so many different variations of how much do we fill? How much do we close in? It was like, it was insane. <laughs> yeah, it has almost a, a microfiber feel yes, to it. Yes, yeah, right. and, and, and you're trying to represent some type of, you know, the, the pilling right. that would happen on a poncho being in the sun, being in the Exactly, in, in, in and the that West. was the thing, you know, that that is that is such an important part of this poncho that some people maybe don't realize, because yeah. when we were doing analysis of all of these costumes, really, but that poncho is just so iconic. You know, what, what's going on front and back? And then Clint was saying, he would take his costume home every day and then bring it back to set the next day. So, it, and that was used for years. Yeah. So yeah, over time, that whole, everything kind of wore out, the original green wore out to this brown color, uh, which again, is such a cool costume detail on him and, and seeing it in quarter scale, kind of draping this way is, is really special. Um, in your job, when you're working on projects like this or you know, new projects over time, are you experimenting with new t processes, new techniques, new manufacturing, like machines that are possible, yes. like, and things, that, does that change all the time? Yes, constantly, constantly. Wow. And you can, you know, uh, it's, it's very evident in pieces like, uh, like Hot Toys, for example, all the printing processes that they're doing, you know, that's like tremendously cutting edge stuff, a lot of that stuff, is that the details are so fine and so beautiful these days that, you know, it's, it's such a fun, sandbox to play around in mm -hmm. because it's it's virtually limitless yeah how much stuff can be done it's now. always cutting edge you're yes, always exactly. you're always playing catch up and you're always have a new canvas right then to play with with the, with characters uh it's and it's never the same it's, right exactly oh, every so... every one of these is a unique puzzle truly wow and the more elaborate really after some hair pulling of course it's it's, <laughs> it's a lot of fun <laughs> Well, Tim, yeah. thank you so much with sh for sharing with me uh, the, this process and these characters, and congratulations on these amazing looking statues and figures. Thank you so much, Sean. Hey guys, Adam Savage from Tested here. If you've ever seen the six inch ruler in inches and centimeters on my forearm and wanted one of your own, but you didn't want it to be permanent, well, today's your lucky day. You can now buy temporary tattoos of my measuring stick my measuring forearm uh, at tested-store.com. Comes like this, goes on in about 30 seconds with a little water. The instructions are on the back. It comes off with rubbing alcohol and hopefully it warms you up to the idea of permanently attaching a measuring device to your body because I use mine every single day.